G'day everyone. Today I want to teach you a little bit about factorising quadratics. Now you've seen this um, in the past, but today there's a slightly different focus. We're actually going to have a look at uh, when a is bigger than 1. So, you know, for example, in this equation here, ax squared plus bx plus c, and a is the coefficient of x squared, a is actually bigger than 1. I don't think you've seen many of these before. You might have, but I want to teach it to you um, today. Now, I want to show you two different methods, one of them being the cross method. Um, hopefully, I can, uh, you know, uh, hopefully you've been taught what the cross method well in the past, but I'll, I'll kind of show you how I'd like you to, to tackle it today. And the other method, uh, you know, my advanced maths class will know it as Miss Dayton's method, but it's actually splitting uh, the middle term uh, method. I'm going to show you both of them. Um, you can use either one, it doesn't really matter, but I want you to know both of them so that, um, that yeah, I guess you can use uh, both of them in any situation. So I'm going to start with this question here. I've got the example. Example 1 will be 2m squared plus 3m minus n. That's an m, by the way. Okay. Now I'd like to factorise this um, expression. So using the cross method, I put a cross here. Now I know that this term here multiplied by this term here must equal the first term. I know that this term here multiplied by this one here must equal the third term. And then in the past what you might have done is you might have added these terms, these two terms here together. It's true but it's not so true when we've got a number that's bigger than one out the front here. Let me show you. So. This, not, this one here multiplied by this one here must be the first term. So I'm going to say that it's 2m and m. Okay, 2m times m is 2m squared. Now this one times this one, I mean, it, it could be a variety of things being 9, you know, negative 9 in fact. I'm just going to try negative 9 and positive 1. Okay, let's have a go. Now, the, the issue with this is that in the past you might have just done negative 9 plus 1. But what I what you need to do is you actually need to multiply this 2m here by this one and to get 2m and this m multiplied by that negative 9 to be negative 9m and then when we add those two together we actually get negative 7m. Unfortunately negative 7m isn't the same as 3m, our middle term, the second term. So, we've chosen the wrong factors. We have to try something else. So I'm going to rub out some of this stuff here, because it's not, no longer relevant. And I have to choose two different factors of 9 that might get there. So, I'm going to try, say, 3 here, and negative 3 up here. So, 2m times 3 is 6m, m times negative 3 is negative 3m. When I add those two together, I get the answer of 3m, which happens to be my second term. So now I know that I've got the right answer. This is a tick here, a tick here, a tick here. Now I can use the cross method. Once I know my factors of negative 3 and 3, 2m and m, I can circle the top, circle the bottom, and write those as two factors, like this. 2m minus 3, m plus 3. Hopefully, this is not too different to the way that you've done the cross method in the past. I suspect the only difference is that the cross multiplication like this, m times negative 3, 2m times 3. Now, there's no real way to know what numbers are going to work over here, what numbers are going to work over here. It kind of is just a little bit of trial and error. And I'll show you an example later, but sometimes it gets really tricky when you've got a number that's actually quite big and has lots of factors, say, you know, something like 12. I mean, it has so many different factors, but you just kind of have to use trial and error until you get the right one. Okay, I'm going to show you another method, uh, sorry, I'm going to show you another question using the cross method, and then after that I'll do the same two questions using Mr. Hayden's method. I just thought I'd go along with the cross method now that we've seen it once. Okay, so the second example that I'm going to do will be on the next page. 
will be here. Example two will be four x squared minus 11 x plus six. This one will be a little bit trickier than the previous one. So again, I draw my cross and I think of two factors of four x squared this is where it can get a little bit tricky because it could be 2x and 2x or it could be 4x and 1x and this is where we're going to have lots of different combinations there's no real way as far as I know there's no real way of knowing which one is going to work so I'm just going to start with 2x and 2x okay now 6 is the uh, the, the one on this side but I'll, I want to find two factors so again this is where it can get quite complicated because it could be two and three it could be six and one but if I have a look at this number in here the middle term it's negative which means that these numbers also need to be negative as well because when I add those after I've done my cross multiplying I'm going to get a negative number hopefully you followed that if you didn't you'd probably work it out eventually anyway so I'm just going to start with those two factors there. 2x and negative 3, 2x and negative 2. I've sort of deliberately chosen ones that are not going to work just to show you the process that you'd have to go through. 2x times negative 2 is negative 4x. 2x times negative 3 is negative 6x. I'm pretty close, but negative 4x minus 6x is negative 10x. Unfortunately, it's not the number that I want. So then what I would have to do is I would have to think about, you know, this, and, and you know, then I can start doing a bit more trial and error. I can try with negative 6 and negative 1, so on and so forth. And unfortunately, I don't really know where the answer is going to be. But what I'll do is I'll just jump to the answer because I've already done this secretly by myself. But let's, let me just rub out all of this. Sometimes this doesn't, isn't as obedient as I want it to be. We'll get there, and a part of my cross is gone too. No good. All right, here we go. We're ready to go. So, I'm going to use 4x and x, and I'm going to use 3 up here and negative 2 here. Sorry, negative 3 up there, negative 2 down there. So, when I do 4x times negative 2, I get negative 8x x times negative 3, I get negative 3x. When I add those two together, I get negative 11x. So I've got all, all of my conditions that work perfectly. So now once I've got all that, I can circle the top, I can circle the bottom, and I get the factors of 4x minus 3 and x minus 2. They can be written in any order. It can be x minus 2 times 4x minus 3. It doesn't matter because they're multiplied together. So there we go. There's the cross method. The next method I'll show you is Miss Dayton's method or splitting the two, uh, splitting the middle term. So I'm going to use exactly the same um, questions, um, but I'll I'll take it, talk you through it step by step. Okay, for the same question, it's two m squared plus three m minus nine. And I'm going to use Miss Dayton's method or splitting the middle term method. I need to go through a couple of steps. So step one, I'm going to multiply A by C. Uh, remembering that A is the number up here in front of the x squared and C is the number by itself. So in this case, I'm going to get uh, 2 multiplied by negative 9, which is negative 18. Step two. Step two, I need to think of two factors of negative 18 that add together to get to the middle term of three. So I can think of negative three and six. When I add those two together, maybe I should just put an addition sign in between there. So negative three plus six equals positive three, okay? Now, my third step, I need to use these numbers here because I'm turning three into two different numbers, negative three and six. Hopefully this will make sense for you. The third step is that I write 
2m squared plus 3m minus 9. I write that as 2m squared plus 6m minus 3m minus 9. So these two numbers here, I've actually split up the middle term of 3 to make it 6 and negative 3. And the reason I do that is because in step 4, I'm now going to take out a common factor of each of these, and hopefully it will be able to be factorised really, really nicely. So this one becomes 2m out as a common factor, and I get m plus 3 minus 3 and I get m plus 3. These two things have to be the same. If they are the same, they are and they have to be, I can now take those out as a common factor. Hopefully you can watch this. m plus 3 taken out as a common factor and m plus 3 taken out as a common factor. This is the last step. And the rest of it is left with 2m minus 3. Grouping 2 and 2 basically. Hopefully you understand that. So that's step 5. And I've got my answer which is exactly the same as the answer previously. Hopefully you've been able to follow that one. I'm going to do one more example just so you get to see that uh, the same method again. Okay let's have a look at the second example. So again I'll use exactly the same question of 4x squared minus 11x plus 6. Okay. So my first step, step 1, is to multiply a by c. So 4 times 6, which is 24. The second step is I need to think of two numbers that multiply to get to 24, but add together to get to uh, my middle term which is negative 11. So if, if I think about that, two numbers that multiply to, I'm thinking of negative 8 and negative 3. Negative 8 added with negative 3 gets us to neg negative 11. Negative 8 multiplied by negative 3 gets us to 24. Again, there's no real quick, easy way of doing that. There are little tricks that you can sort of learn as you go along, but uh, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll tell you those at the end of the lesson when you start to get a little bit more confident with them. So, step three. I write this, uh, this expression out again. So, 4x squared minus 8x, using this bit over here, minus 3x plus 6. Okay, so I've split the middle term into those two things there. And then step four, I group two and two together. So I get 4x, x minus two, minus three, x minus two. Now, hopefully these two things are exactly the same, and they are. So therefore, my step five, I can do I can take out the x minus 2 as a common factor and I'll be left with 4x minus 3. And as you can see, I get exactly the same answer as the one over there. Just reverse, but that doesn't matter because they're multiplied. So, I don't mind which way you choose to take on, whether you choose to use the cross method or Mr. Aiden's method or splitting the middle turn. There seems to be pros and cons to both of them. It really doesn't matter which one you uh, prefer to do in the test, but for today I want you to have a go at both of them. So I'm going to give you some questions in just a moment that you can uh, work on by yourself.